You ever need to build something for your kids and you decide to take the laziest way to do it? So one of my kids recently had a birthday, his fourth birthday. He really likes playing on the jungle gym in the backyard, but winter is coming and I live in Wisconsin, so we're gonna have to do something else. I, I came up with a design to build like a, a one of those outdoor playground kind of things. And I'm gonna build that uh, in the next couple of videos here. I bought a bunch of wood, I designed the thing up, and it is very simple. You know, how simple? I don't hear you asking through the computer. Well, this is the instructions right here. Fits on a card, well, it's more of the cut list. But using this card and a 3D model that I made, uh, I, I can build it. Well, it's, I say 3D model. I can take like two screenshots from the 3D model and this list and build the entire thing. That's how easy it is. And I'm able to do that because I bought, or I designed it to build with minimal cutting. I'll show you what I mean. This board, for example, is a one by one by six by four feet. I can get it at a hardware store. A lot of, a lot of like home improvement stores will sell these where they're, they're surfaced on four sides, S4S and they come to a nominal length. So one by one by six by four feet is four feet, give or take, they're not very exact. Uh, three quarter inch thick, not one, and five and a half inch wide, not six. Uh, and the reason they do that is because they're liars and they're trying to steal wood from you. Now there's probably some reason, but it's any justification other than trying to cut costs, that's a lie. Anyways, you can get those at most home improvement stores. The ones around me, I don't have a Lowe's by me. I have a Home Depot. There's a Menards. The Menards is bigger, has the best wood selection, so I tend to shop there. I avoid Home Depot at all costs because I used to work there. Uh, I, that's, that's a bit harsh. I didn't work at the Home Depot here. I worked at another one on the East Coast. And uh, no, it was, it was fine. It was fine. My coworkers were great. Job was fine. Sometimes it was kind of a pain, but you know, that's why they pay you money. And I was a student, so you know, that's life. Anyways, going on. Um, I'm also going to do this with a bare minimum of power tools because although I have a table saw and a chop saw, uh, they're not here. They're in a shed, much like my snowblower. It's in a shed. It's not here. I should have it, but I don't have room for it. So I'm going to do all the cutting by hand using this very worn out, very ruined Japanese pull saw. The same saw you saw me uh, using to cut bricks, fire bricks, although I used the, this edge and I'm going to use this edge on the wood. So I'm going to have to use this and still cut fairly straight. That's another reason I got the uh, pre, pre cut to size kind of boards. So the, the boards along the floor of the build and on the sides kind of, they're all four feet long because I can buy them pre cut to four feet long. Like they, they, they don't come perfect. So add in a little wiggle room, but that's not going to be like an inch off or anything. Uh, but I'm going to do all the cutting with this before I get into that. I'm going to pass it off to a different me, a voiceover me, and show you the design in a little more detail and also explain kind of how it's going to be built. Okay, so here's the basic design scene kind of from a above three quarter view. Ignore the slide thing on the right. I'm not going to put a slide there. I'm going to put the slide on the on the other opening where that slide is on this poorly made model. I'm going to make like, I, I'm probably going to put like a, a rope ladder, one of those things, you know. A lot of these extra things that come for uh, playgrounds, you can actually just buy like slides and, and the attachments for like a climbing wall or or swings or benches or a lot of that stuff. You, you can just buy and in fact you might want to just like check Craigslist because people taking apart playgrounds sell those parts off pretty cheap. So yeah, probably gonna put a ladder there on the right. It's not very high up. The, the floor on the upper level there is four feet. So it's four feet tall and there's enough room above there and it's the top of it's pretty flush with the ceiling so there's no way anyone can climb up over the top and fall extra far. And where it's going in my basement there's, there's carpeting and it's pretty well padded and we're probably gonna put pads around it. But basically the, the posts go up through the bottom and then there's kind of uh, boards around the sides and then and then floor tiles. Did I say tiles? I meant panels. Floor panels? Floor boards? Boards! That's the word I'm looking for. Anyways, the, the boards aren't just kind of stuck sideways into the side of the thing. There's a frame underneath and in this picture you can kind of see there's the, the posts and then there's like a, a rectangular 2x4 frame thing that I'm going to screw into the post very securely and the the floorboards actually rest on top of that so if even if those boards weren't screwed into the sides or anything 
they would still hold up. So the, the, the thin boards around the outside will hold them in place and they'll rest entirely on those 2x4s. I've, I considered adding more bracing inside, but this kind of design with the posts and the 2x4s and the boards on top are the way that I, I designed and built a loft for myself in college. It was a pretty large loft in a kind of trapezoid shape to fit the room, and I used it for a long time, and it never fell over and killed me even once. And at the end, it, it was still totally fine. I mean, I ended up taking it down and giving the boards away to an uncle of mine for helping me move because what am I going to do with all these 2x4s? I don't have a trapezoidal room anymore. That's probably more information than he needed about me in college. But before I, I put my kids in there, obviously I'm going to stand up there and jump around and stuff and make sure it's pretty stable. Back to the external view. Uh, you see all that space underneath it too? Yeah, I'm going to put like benches or I have this little picnic table thing I can put under there. So it's kind of configurable. I, I don't plan on building anything underneath it. But it's, it's an area that they can play and you, know, you can hang like curtains or blankets and stuff around and they can make a little fort. Who knows? And then I can also add on to the sides, like from the posts going to the sides. You In a normal playground outside, you usually see like, sl like swings and stuff. Well, this is going in a corner, that, that corner in the top part of the picture, that's going in a corner in the basement. So if I put slides off to the side, then they would swing back and hit the wall. And obviously I don't want that. I don't want them slide, like swinging so high that they hit the ceiling or anything. So I'm not going to do that, although I can't add more of this for whatever reason they want it to be bigger, although I don't see that happening exactly. But never say never, right? Last image here is like inside. So I said I don't have to cut those floorboards. Well, in the corner I do. So I have to cut the, that floorboard to notch out where the where the post goes up through it. That's pretty easy. It's just a if it, if I use if I used a four by four, it would be a three and three and a half by three and a half cut. But I'm gonna make a three by three and a half cut because double up two by fours, uh, the math doesn't work. But this way, there's no gap. We have a playground in our backyard that was it was here when we moved in, but it, it wasn't built by the previous owner. It was it was actually like a commercial one you can buy, and it's got these huge gaps in the floor. Like if the kids weren't careful, they could like drop an ankle in there and fall out and break their leg. Like seriously, they sold it this way? Well, I don't want any holes in the bottom where they can drop anything. So you won't even be able to drop a Hot Wheels car down in there. There'll be like an eighth of an inch gap. Oh, and for the record, I think I'm going to put the cut list down in the description. I'm just going to type it out. If I don't do that, if I forget, someone remind me in the comments and I'll do it. I'll just, I'll put uh, the size of the boards and how long I cut them and how many there are just for the base. Just in case you're curious, I, I didn't keep track of what the wood cost though. So I'm sorry, if you ask that, I, I don't have an answer for you. I could do the math, you know, but I, I ain't got time for that. Most of the boards are already, are I can just buy them the right size because the majority of them are four feet long, but some of them are not the right length. I'm gonna have to cut them down. I, I intended for the posts, the, the four legs to be four by fours, I didn't find any 4x4s that I liked. Uh, that's, that's a couple reasons for that. Uh, I, I could get plenty of like pressure treated ones and like gross looking ones, but most of these like home improvement stores, the wood they get is kind, they're like the seconds from lumber yards that like the, the good lumber yards don't want. So that's, that's kind of why if you go to Home Depot, like all the boards are warped terribly and they all look really ugly. Yeah, well they're also like a buck a piece. So you get what you pay for. It's not like you're going to a, a lumber yard and saying, hey, I want a truckload of walnut, perfect grain, no, no sapwood, all quarter sawn, four quarters thick. You know, like you don't get that at Home Depot. You also don't pay that at Home Depot. Although these, these uh, surface four sides nominal lumber boards are pretty expensive if you run the numbers. But like you only, I only bought like several of them. Probably should have thought that through. Anyways, the cutting. Gonna need one of these. What is this called? Carpenter square, speed square, or something. It does. It's it's a square. You can also do the the 45 degree angle, which will not come into play with this piece, but it will in those those narrow slat things. And my cut list. So I, since I couldn't find four by fours that I liked, I'm gonna double up the two by fours. Instead of being three and a half by three and a half, like a standard four by four, it's gonna be three and a half by three because you know two plus two equals three, and not three and a half like a four by four and not four like it actually should in real math. So we're, we're gonna cut this, let's see, where's my bad handwriting? 83 and, and geez, that's a weird decimal. It's 83 and seven eighths. We got 83 
and seven eighths right now. That's where this comes into play. Now normally if you have like a big circular saw, one of those chop things, you would just like get all lined up boom, and it's square. Well, I can't do that with a hand saw. If you, if you are good at sawing, like if you do a lot of hand tool woodworking, you can basically just sight down and cut and you'll be fine. If you're not as good at it, you can use a guide like prop, prop something up here, whoops, prop something up here and use that to guide the saw down. Or if you want to be extra tricky, mark the line all the way around. I'm using the big bold marker so you can see it more easily. See, see people, I'm learning about production values. Even though I now have a much larger, see it, it, it almost lines up. Perfect. Well, the tops and bottoms of this post, one will be in the carpet and one will be pretty close to the ceiling. So it doesn't really matter if I cut it perfectly. I'm gonna switch sides here. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna, gonna guide it with my finger and I'm not actually going to cut all the way through. I'm only gonna cut about that deep. Flip it and cut all the way along these. Now this isn't my technique, I didn't figure it out. Not that clever. This is one good way to line, line up a cut, square all the way along, around, and then when you go to cut it off at the end, that let you know if you cut things, you get that, like, that last little bit at the end of a cut, and it like tears off and it looks terrible. Well, that's because the fibers on the surface are the only thing holding it once you've cut through from the other side, and it can tear, because wood tears pretty easily along the grain. Well, this method cuts all the surface grains. Whoop. Speaking of tear out, this is a crummy two by four, but this cuts the surface fibers all the way around. You know, do a depth of maybe almost a quarter inch or so. So when you get to the end, that last little bit doesn't rip out a huge chunk. See, gone all the way around. So now we got to cut about a quarter inch down all the way around. Now, as you cut through, the cuts on either side, they'll kind of guide the blade down, which is especially nice because this isn't like one of those rigid saws, you know, the rigid push saws that kind of go straight as long as your technique is okay. This thing is very flexible. So it's, it's a little easier to, to make it go off track, but the grooves that are cut all the way around kind of guide it. So if I saw over here and then say I shift over here, or whatever, they, they, don't, they don't allow it to go off track. They all kind of follow that groove all the way through. What's not helping is the amount of uh, fire brick I've cut with this cheap wood saw. The blade's not exactly all that sharp. Also, my duct tape uh, depth stop is getting all ruined and I can't peel it off. It's like permanently stuck on there. Get, get out of there. Uh. See, now it's cut to the point where it's like all loosey-goosey, but instead of dropping off and tearing out a huge chunk, it pops off and there's no tear out. And look at that. Like it's not, not perfect, but you know, it's, it's square with the edge. And wow, the shadows make it look really terrible. But see, it's square with the edge. It didn't tear out a huge chunk. This is the last little bit that was remaining. Didn't tear a chunk out of the edge. There's no jaggedy parts sticking up to impale my hand just now as I'm doing this stupidly. And that's how I'm going to do it. And that didn't even take very long. And I'm using a very dull, ruined saw. So just imagine. Just imagine how much easier it would be with the right tools. Oh, and I failed to mention, I bought a slide on, on uh, Facebook Marketplace. Needs some cleaning up, but otherwise it's fine. So obviously I'm going to hit this with a sander when I'm done too. I have, a, I have a random orbit sander over there. And if you want to do that at an angle, you draw the lines, you know, with, with that. It only gives you a 45 degree angle, but if you design for a 45 degree angle, then that's what you're gonna get. So it's easy. One cu couple of tools, simple crummy handsaw. You know, you don't need a chop saw. Although if I had like, if I actually had my, my big saw here, then it would be quite a bit faster. Okay.